to you all and welcome on this Sunday the 6th of December 2020, the second Sunday in Advent and the first Sunday that our churches are able to be open again after the second lockdown. For those of you who are joining the services uh, in person, fantastic. For those of you who still feel safe for joining us online, you are very welcome. If you do want to book in to one of the services, please do just that. Book in so we know who's coming and we can make sure it's safe for everybody. This week in church, we started our online Advent group. If you would like to join that, it's not too late. Please do contact Max. We would love to see some more of you. As we're also thinking about preparing for Christmas, maybe think about some things that you can do to prepare yourself this Christmas season. Maybe you could download an Advent Bible series, some Bible study for you. Maybe you could follow the Haven't Passion Play Advent calendar, which is doing a little part of the Christmas story each day, and I would highly recommend it to you. A little closer towards Christmas, we're going to be having our own nativity scenes for you to walk through in St Thomas's churchyard. It's really exciting to see how that's coming together and I do urge you to book into that because that will be a fantastic experience. Come with your cameras, take pictures, listen to parts of the Bible, listen to some carols and really enjoy Christmas as a family. And as we just think about coming into our service today, I've told you it's the second Sunday in Advent, but we're not quite there yet. It's coming, but we're not quite there. What I'd quite like you to do, if you can, just to pause this video for a few minutes and have a little search of the link I've put online of the YouTube clip. This is a little bit from Shrek, which just leads us in nicely into today's service. I hope you took time to enjoy that clip. It's certainly one of my favourite parts of Shrek. And it always reminds me of taking a young child on a car journey. When you may have only just started out and they're saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? The expectancy of a young child. And that's what we should have in this Advent season, an expectancy of things that are going to happen. And I'm just going to read to you a poem by Gerard Kelly called Christmas is Waiting. Christmas is waiting to happen. Outside, a vacant hillside lies silent, strangely empty, of any angel's choir. A stable waits for bookings at the inn to multiply. Distant kings study charts and keep gifts in cold storage, while shepherds plan their memoirs in expectancy of unexpected fame and keep a chapter free for miracles. A small velvet patch in the black night sky stands ready to hold a newborn star. And oppressed peoples everywhere cling wildly to prophecy and song and whisper the word, Messiah. They switched on the lights in Oxford Street, counting off the buying days. Like guardsmen on parade, shops are stocked and standing by, revving up the engines of their debt-powered swiping machines and history watchers mark another year in the slow count to 3,000. But here lies an old man in a stairwell where he fell three days ago and no one knows. Here a young girl loiters in the streetlight's unholy halo to sell the only thing she owns that men will pay for. And here an infant sleeps on a sack on the hard earth floor where even a mother's hand is empty and there are places where Christmas is still waiting to happen. Now today is the second Sunday of Advent, and each year at Advent we light one candle each Sunday in the lead up to Christmas, 
Today being the second Sunday in Advent, we're going to light the second candle. And my Advent ring here is one that I've just made up of things I've got around the house. And maybe you could make your own Advent ring while you're at home and not able to get to church. So we light the candles. The first candle last week we lit reminded us of the patriarchs, Abraham, our father in faith, David, the ancestor in whose city Jesus was born. And today we light the second candle. The second candle reminds us of the prophets, the prophets who foretold the birth of Jesus. And as we light our Advent candles, it reminds us that the time is near. We're nearly there, but not quite yet. As we light our Advent candle, light of the world shine upon us. As we prepare for Christmas time, light of the world shine upon us. In this world of pain and darkness, light of the world shine through us. To all the people who don't know you, light of the world shine through us. Jesus, you are coming again. Light of the world, light the way. In our service here today, light of the world, light the way. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a saviour who would bring peace. You help them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming to the world. Amen. Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas and show all the world God's love. Amen. And now we're going to sing together that wonderful song, Light of the World. And since you're at home and there are no restrictions, please do enjoy singing with us. After this song, we're going to hear from Mike and Vicky for our readings. And then we're going to hear a little message from Peter.
This morning's first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, because of the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. This morning's read is from Mark 1, 1 to 8. So, John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in his Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Well, one thing's for certain. It's going to be a very different Christmas to the one we imagined this time last year. Personally, and thankfully, we're still going to be able to see our children and grandchildren over that five day grace period. And so Rosalind and I are making preparations. We've bought the turkey, we bought the Christmas pudding. Actually, it's last year's, but I understand they mature, so it'll be fine. 
but most of our presents, I suspect, will be bought online and delivered to our door. Do you know, I love Christmas. It really is my favourite time of the year. And every year I make myself the same promise. I really am going to focus more on the reason for the season. And I'm not going to get sucked into all the commercialism, the stress, the shopping and the business. I'm simply going to focus on Jesus coming to earth. Emmanuel, God with us. But who am I trying to kid? Before you know it, all the needs and the wants and the demands of Christmas will simply kick in. A few years ago, I remember being struck by something in the film Star Wars The Phantom Menace. The wise Qui Gon Jinn said to a very small boy, Anakin Skywalker, this. He said, your focus determines your reality. Let me say that again. Your focus determines your reality. In other words, what you put your mind to focus on is what you become. I wonder if you've ever thought, reading the Old Testament, why there are so many feasts mentioned. There are tent festivals. There are light festivals. There are bread festivals. There are festivals and feasts all over the place. And God asks his people to keep those annually. Why are they there? Well, it's because God knows the human heart. He knows how easy it is for the enemy to suck our focus away from us. And you see, that's exactly what was happening to the people of God to whom Isaiah was speaking. They'd been in exile in Babylon a very long time and they were losing their focus on God. They were being assimilated. They were being sucked into Babylonian life well, and faith as well. They'd lost their focus. And so enter Isaiah, bringing with him a word from the Lord. In the previous 26 chapters, before this morning's passage from chapter 40, Isaiah's message had been one about God's coming wrath and judgment. But in chapter 40, there seems to be a change. To quickly summarise it, Isaiah says that something amazing and glorious is going to happen. Something fabulous is awaiting the exiles, a new experience of God's presence for which his people were encouraged to make preparations. Let me read a couple of those verses again and I want you to imagine that you're hearing them as if you too were those exiles. You were in the desert, as it were. You were waiting to hear from God. And through Isaiah, God speaks to you and he says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground should become level and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all the people will see it together. How are you really feeling about this Christmas? Does Christmas feel like a burden for you? Or is it, as God intended, all feasts and festivals to be a blessing, a time of spiritual refocusing and refreshing? If it's the former, a burden, perhaps as we hit this second week of Advent, we need to remember that we have to refocus. Isaiah 40 verses 3 to 5 centres around the idea that we are to prepare the way for the Lord. So maybe we need to step up our spiritual preparation so that we get the best out of Christmas. 
because Jesus is worthy. And Advent also reminds us that soon and very soon, as the old song says, he is coming. We're celebrating the birth of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And isn't he worthy for us to take a few minutes every day of Advent to prepare our hearts to receive him afresh? I don't know whether you know, but before I was ordained, I worked for the National Health Service. Some time ago, I worked in London in a small hospital and we were having a very exciting time because we were to have a special visitor. The Queen Mother was going to visit our hospital and believe me, we made incredible preparations. We had to make sure that the flowers that we had at the hospital matched her outfit. And Clarence House even sent us a special toilet seat that we had to put in a designated toilet for her use only. Well, can you imagine what it would be like if the Queen were coming to Portsmouth? Indeed, what would it be like if the Queen were visiting one of our churches in Bedhampton? Boy, would we prepare. And if we can do that much for our Queen, who is lovely but is an earthly sovereign, how much more should we, as followers of Jesus, make our preparations for his visit? Doesn't he deserve at least that preparation? Advent is all about focus and preparation. And you know, preparation doesn't just randomly happen. You have to decide to prepare the way for the Lord. One of the things someone said on a course I went to was this. They said, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. Advent is all about preparation and planning. And that means we have to plan our spiritual preparation, as well as the turkey and the sausages and the Christmas pudding, if we're to get the most out of this very special season. Right now, in these last few weeks before Christmas, I encourage you to make a plan to get the most out of Advent. Maybe your plan will be to involve something positive, engage with something really life affirming. Perhaps it will mean committing to God's word in a way that you haven't of late. Maybe it could be to do with your prayer life. There are lots of Advent Bible reading plans online. Why don't you visit one? and see if you can make the most. Maybe your preparation will, will involve stopping something negative. Our passage speaks about removing the obstacles. Verse three says this, make straight in the desert the highway of our God. And you know what? We all approach Advent with all sorts of rough edges. Some of them are bad habits. Some of them a bad mindset. Some could be deeply held hurt that have chained us to the past. So maybe we need to make sure that there are no obstacles like these in the way of spending time with Jesus. After all, Jesus doesn't want to face an obstacle course every time he wants to spend time with us. If you know that there are these obstacles that need removing, well, listen to some words of Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, verse 11, we read this. Come to me, says Jesus, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Isn't that lovely? Rest for your souls. I think we all need some rest some soul rest this Advent, don't we? So give Jesus your burden, your obstacles. Give him that failure that's hurting you. Take his hand and allow him to pick you up, dust you off, bring healing to your soul and get you ready to celebrate the feast. Make purposeful preparations for there is a reward up ahead, says Isaiah, and the reward 
is seeing the glory of the Lord for us revealed again in Jesus. Wow, what a promise this Advent. All of us need a fresh encounter, I believe, with Jesus this Advent. It could be a daily encounter. It needs to be a moment by moment encounter. All of us face the temptation of missing the real meaning of Christmas and getting so tied up in the physical things of the celebration that we miss the spiritual heart. And that's why the promise of the glory of God is vital to us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to make a straight path to God so that in his power we can come close to him and we can live in victory through Jesus. Your focus determines your reality. So determine to be focused on him. Prepare. Thank you for that message, Peter. It was so lovely to hear from you today. And as Peter was talking, he spoke about preparing the way for the Lord. That really made me think of that wonderful song from the musical Godspell, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord, and how that song builds up with the anticipation of John the Baptist and the others singing, Prepare the way for the Lord, prepare the way for the Lord is coming. Prepare the way. This Advent time, prepare the way for our Lord's arrival at Christmas. And let's remember what this season is all about. Let's not get lost in the trappings and the materialism of everything that's going on. But this year in 2020, above all years, let's take the time to really stop and reflect and think about the reason for the season. And if you would like to just take a pause, I will also put another link up for you where you can find Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord from Godspell. And Rosalind is now going to lead us in our time of intercessions. Thank you, dear Father, that we are never alone. There is nowhere where we can go where you are not there. Thank you for your faithfulness to us, even when we don't deserve it. You never change. You are always the same, loving God. Thank you for the vaccine that is ready to be used. Lord, may it stop the virus in its tracks. May glory and thanks be given to you for it. Thank you that the R rate is going down and that there are less people being admitted to hospital. Thank you for the NHS. We pray for all of those working in the NHS. Grant them wisdom, compassion and energy. We thank you for the royal family. Bless them and keep them safe. We pray for Boris Johnson and the government. Please help them in the decisions that they make regarding our country. May your voice be heard. Help them as they negotiate Brexit and huge shortages of money due to COVID. May they put their trust in you. Please bless our Bishop Christopher and his wife Sally at what must be a difficult time. Help him as he encourages the clergy and pastors the diocese. Thank you for Max and Susie and for the other leaders in our church. Help them as they seek to serve you and further your kingdom. We pray for all of the Christmas preparations going on in our church. Please use them to help people to come to know you. We pray for the nativities and Christmas activities taking place in our schools. Use them for your glory. May the real meaning of Christmas be declared and heard. We thank you for the wonderful truths in Christmas carols. Open people's eyes and hearts that they might find you through them. 
We pray for those who are sick, lonely or hurting in any way. Please meet them in their needs and bring healing. Thank you, dear Father. We offer these prayers and the prayers of our hearts to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for those prayers, Rosalind. And now let's join together in a prayer. We look forward to seeing a new star appear in the sky, prompting those far off to draw near to you. Lord Jesus, draw us to you. We look forward to the familiar stable scenes, their mangers standing empty, waiting to receive you. Lord Jesus, come to us anew. We look forward to hearing again the angels singing, glory to God and peace to all on earth. Lord Jesus, let us take up their song. We look forward to seeing the shepherds and kings alike, poor and humble, noble and wealthy, all bowing before you. Lord Jesus, unite us in worship. We look forward to remembering a humble girl with an ordinary background chosen to bring your hope into the world. Lord Jesus, bring new hope through us. We look forward to a child wrapped in linen, lying in a manger, weak and helpless, small and completely reliant on others. Lord Jesus, Teach us to depend on you. We look forward to seeing, hearing and knowing afresh how you, infinite and incomprehensible God, freely entered your creation, becoming humble and tangible so that we might freely enter your presence. Lord Jesus, we look, we wonder and we worship. Amen. And now, as we carry on with our worship, please do join with me in singing that lovely hymn, Thine Be the Glory, Risen Conquering Son.
as we finish our service today, take time in the busyness of this season for quiet reflection. For the light of God's love is discernible everywhere. We will let ourselves be surprised by wonder and set aside time to offer quiet thanks. The good news of Advent is this, Christ is coming. Christ is always coming. We will welcome Christ into our hearts. We will let ourselves be guided by his ministry. We will go forth from this place in hope. And I pray that as you go out into this week, God will be with you in all that you do, in all of your conversations. Have a great week. God bless all of you.